Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, founder of PG Mustard, and this is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Welcome back, Nikolai. How are you getting on and what would you like to talk about today? Hi, Michael. First of all, thank you for keeping the, how is it called, the ball rolling or how to say, long time no see or long time no, no hear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for very interesting interviews. I liked listening to them uh, while I was slightly off, but maybe it's time to return to our regular format or have a mix. I don't know what we will decide next, but today we have a regular format, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the topic I brought this topic is overhead of observability tools, the most popular ones. Well, one is the most popular one, PGC statements. And uh, usually people, like, I remember exactly when we had, we didn't have PGC statements, we had only log-based analysis. We didn't have wait events, didn't have PGC statements like 15 years ago, right? And um, we only had a log-based analysis and there was a tool written in PHP called pgfwin and then another tool replaced yeah. it written in Perl called pgbadger. And the idea was like mm -hmm. people people always like first thing to figure out that oh usually we only see the, at only a tip of the iceberg only we see only like some queries which are the slowest ones but you cannot properly perform like full holistic analysis if, if you don't see the fast queries because fast queries might might be loading your might, might be consuming even more resources than slow queries. So what people did usually, they experienced DBAs usually said, okay, I'm going to switch off all query logging for a few minutes to collect everything and then analyze. In very, like in very many cases, it worked well. Yes, there is observer effect because we, we probably put our Postgres down completely if we log all queries, but not always. Sometimes <laughs> it, it depends. So yeah, this is quite, is quite underst like understandable, but then PGC statements were, was created and some DBAs I remember we were saying, oh, you know, like we still need to study its overhead. And then somehow there was like, there, some, there were some benchmarks. I don't remember any benchmarks I would say I trust them. But I remember many experienced, experienced folks started saying, oh, you know, yes, there is overhead, but it's below 10%. And since this thing is measuring everything, it's observing whole workload, it's worth keeping it enabled. Let's have it enabled. I remember also there was some number, like people, many people saying, you know, PGC statements overhead is 7%. It's kind of strange, but like kind of seven percent. Okay, who? Seven percent. I don't like. I don't remember any benchmarks that proved it, but I remember it was like consensus was it's below below ten percent. So we are we are all good. If you try to find the good benchmark from like these early days of PGS statements, it would be great. I I I don't think it exists, but honestly, we as community should perform good benchmarks there. I don't remember that. It does mean they don't exist, of course, but. I did a little bit of searching beforehand because I was interested in if there was any up-to-date ones as well. I couldn't find anything great, but there were a few trustworthy sources. One was PG Analyze, a, monitoring, a commercial monitoring tool that uses PGSAT statements. In their frequently asked questions, they gave an estimate of approximately 1% of CPU time, which I thought was interesting that they're telling their customers. Anyway, it, as we're going to discuss, this is all very dependent on workload, right? But at least that's that's interesting and I trust them enough to to say that's probably based on some tests on their side, even if I didn't see the actual benchmarking. And then the other things I've seen are uh, a series of, well, there's a question on the DBA Stack Exchange and somebody's quoting various Postgres authors and a benchmarking series. One that was like a more realistic workload that was about 0.5% measured overhead and another that was a, a more stress test that measured it about 10%. So those are numbers, but that, that's a wild range of different numbers. And as we're going to discuss later, you've done some work that shows even like, yeah. 
that it can well, be very different, which is cool. I hope by the end of this episode, people will start having some ideas why this range can be so wide. Uh, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I, th- I can imagine like zero point five percent or ten percent. They, bo- in both cases, it can be so. I mean, it depends on workload mm-hmm. actually. V- very well depends on the workload, and also not only about not only on workload. We will talk about it later, right? So yeah, okay. But when I say overhead, of course, I mean CPU overhead, first of all, because uh, we don't think mm-hmm. about uh, disk I.O. or disk usage, disk space usage here or network, you know, nothing like that. Only p- pure CPU overhead. By the way, when guys like RDS and others, probably inheriting this from Oracle, when they consider weight event being null in just activity as CPU uh, marking it as green CPU green in performance inside insights do they mean other weight events all of them are not CPU I don't understand this I don't know <laughs> because many of uh, for example uh, LW uh, lightweight locks Spin locks, for example, they, they are purely CPU. I know we have several listeners from AWS, so maybe they can let us know. We, ha- we have listeners, yeah, yeah. And on, on the other hand, if you say CPU for instead of null, null means unknown. And according to Postgres documentation and source <laughs> code, it means, it means no weight. In reality, it means either really no weight and maybe like some kind of CPU work, but also in many cases, it means a weight event, which is not yet created and code code is not covered with this. Mm. For example, Postgres 16, we recently had some benchmarks and we saw weight event, which you see in Postgres 16, but you don't, don't see it in Postgres 14 because it was not yet created there. So it, it, and then I'm thinking, okay, it means in performance insights on RDS, and I think in many other systems, maybe in Cloud SQL as well, or this special viewer at Hawk tool written in Java, it also like, likes to use green color and say this is CPU, but it's actually not CPU, it's, it's null. Because CPU doesn't exist in the list of weight events in, in just activity. So if you market CPU for 16, but oh, for 14, because it's what was null, but then you start distinguishing it for 16, something is not right here, right? So I, I'm asking, is it really CPU? Yeah. So interesting question, but it's a slightly off topic. Uh, back to PGST statements. So let's, let's talk about benchmarks we had. So idea was uh, we got some uh, credits from Google Cloud. And uh, it, it's, it's great. We like this year we will be perform. I mean, we, I mean, Bosco CI team, we will be performing a lot of benchmarks. I'm going to do a lot of we already had a lot of benchmarks, uh, I think thousands of them, uh, if you count each uh, iteration, and hundreds of them if you count whole whole uh, benchmark uh, consisting of many iterations. So we were curious how many TPS we can squeeze from Postgres 16 on the very, various big, big machines, Intel, AMD, and there was a good article from 2016 from Alexander Korotkov, uh, when both Postgres and MySQL, I remember, teamed up. It was interesting. I think, um, uh, I, I don't remember, if somebody from Percona also was working on MySQL. The goal, the goal was to demonstrate that the both systems can show million TPS. And in, uh, during that work, uh, some uh, contention issues were improved, uh, fixed in Postgres. So P- Postgres reached uh, million TPS on some strong machines. And I like that benchmark because it's simple. It's PG bench, regular, uh, select only. So it's only selects, very s- simple ones. So we just repeated the same benchmark. And as usual for such benchmarks, it's actually loads, stress, stress load testing, stress testing, because you yes. are exploring this, this edge. It's not what you need to do for your application, for example, unless you on purpose studying it. I, I hate this behavior being default in PGBench. 
Like it should, it should not be so because it's provoking to perform stress tests instead of regular load tests and exploring normal situation, for example, 25 or 50% of CPU load. But in our case, we just want to squeeze as much as we can. So we did this and I published blog post about our new AI bot and this, uh, it has details and links uh, to, to details how we did it. So we took uh, the, the newest Intel fourth generation uh, Intel scalable Sapphire Rapids, it's called, right? And also fourth generation AMD Epic, C3 and C3D instances on, on GCP. One has, uh, the biggest number is 176 vCPUs and AMD has 360 vCPUs. And more, both have more than terabyte of RAM. So it's insane, but we use spots AWS has spots, GCP has spots. It's cool. Like you pay a couple of bucks for for such experiment, honestly. Like it's so not even. Oh. I, I realized even if we didn't have credits, I, I would probably pay for myself. For it's interesting to explore these things because we just provision temporary machines for one or two hours, and uh, spot means huge discount. Yeah. So. And we, this kind of experiment, uh, it's classic experiment uh, for stress testing. You first start with one connection, then more, more connections, and uh, you control. Uh, we chose uh, Alexander Korotkov's approach. Uh, in PG Bench, both dash C and dash J are the same. So we start from one, then we put 50. <laughs> at, 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 with such huge machines, this step is reasonable. <laughs> Jumping yeah. to 50 strike right away. Then 100, then 150, 200, and so on until, I think, uh, 500. Exceeding the number of vCPUs in both cases. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. since we use PostgreSQL cluster, which uh, is a project, it's open source project, it's a very good thing. Ansible uh, kind of set of playbooks to provision Patronic clusters with a lot of things. It's maintained by Vitaly, who is working with, uh, in my team. So it's a, it's a great tool and it has a lot of things, including those we like over years discussed together and he just added into PostgreSQL cluster. So we use it. And we, because of that, we, we had a lot of observability tools, including those for query analysis, PGSAT statements, PGSAT Kcache, much less popular, and PGWet sampling for weight, uh, weight event analysis. And then we saw a very strange picture. Until 50, we grow in terms of TPS, kind of approach a million TPS, but then go down very quickly. And on Intel, we went down even more, but it, it's, it's a different story. And Thanks to PG weight sampling, we saw that we have uh, number one weight event is related to PG stat K cache. So we immediately realized this is observed effect from this PG stat, stat K cache. PG, for those who don't does know PG stat K cache, it's additional extension to PG stat statements extension, which provides physical level metrics, uh, user CPU, sys CPU, d real disk IO at physical level, uh, context switches, so it's it's very useful to understand uh, real CPU usage. Unlike this weight event equal now equals now, which I think is wrongly uh, presented in RDS Performance Insights. This thing, uh, Trustworthy, we use it many years. A few big companies use it, use it as well. It's not super popular. RDS doesn't have it. Cloud SQL doesn't have it. Many most managed providers, managed Postgres providers, don't have it. I know Yandex Cloud ha has it. So, I think they might be the only ones that I've, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But also one of the biggest e-commerce company we worked mm -hmm. with uh, also has it for many years and they have very critical systems running on Postgres. So it's, uh, I, but, but in this case, overhead was so huge. Like what's happening? And I immediately published it on Twitter and Vitaly created an issue in Pagistat Kcash GitHub a repository and then maintainers, they created a fix in four hours, I think. <laughs> so yes. I think they expected something. There was some additional log which was removed uh, in this fix. 
uh, with idea this lock is something old and it's not really needed, but in our case, it was slowing everything down when contention is high, when many, many sessions fight, not fight, they basically what's happening with PG bench, you have by default only four or four queries, right? If you say select only dash uppercase S, Mm -hmm. It's only single query, only one select to PG, PG bench accounts table. That's it. In this case, like hundreds of sessions try to increment metrics in a single record of PG stat K cache, right? And due to that lock, which was removed in the latest version, it was not good. I mean, the more sessions we have, the biggest contention and the biggest, the bigger overhead is, and uh, we we see it as as we increase the number of clients, the number of connections and jobs, the dash C, dash J in PG bench uh, parameters, uh, TPS go down. So we have more, we have room, we have more VCPUs, right? But we cannot use yeah. them properly because all of them try to, to execute basically the same normalized query. Parameters don't matter here. Yeah. I've pulled the chart up from your tweet and just to give people an idea at 50, clients it's about 550,000 TPS at 100 clients it does go up to about 700,000 TPS but to uh, 150 we're that we're down below the 50 client rate and it's at only 400,000 then it settles at about at 200 clients to and above at about 300,000 TPS which is less than we had at 50 so it's the super interesting curve and cool to hear that you got so quickly to the root cause and that the team were able to fix it so quickly. Yeah, in a few hours. Well, uh, let's split the story here to two paths. First path is purely yes. PGSAT K cache, and second path mm -hmm. is without it. Because we, when we saw this overhead, we started, we continued our discovery of maximum TPS on Intel and modern Intel and modern AMD without PGSAT K cache, of course. Because, like, we didn't expect it, it would be fixed so quickly. But when the fix was ready, we asked the bot to repeat, repeat this benchmark. It was interesting to convince the bot that it's safe to download fresh code from GitHub and compile it. Uh, it, it hallucinated uh, saying it's against uh, policy. When I asked which policy, it said the Postgres AI policy. <laughs> so <laughs> it was funny. Like I went checking, do we have such policy? I checked all our docs because bot bot does know our documents. So probably it like, but it was just pure hallucination. Uh, yeah. So then we convinced it. It, it verified, and indeed uh, we saw that uh, the fix uh, indeed resolves the problem, and uh, no more such overhead. So it was good, and uh, next week the new release of PG Stat K Cache was issued. But interesting question, like as I mentioned, I trust those people, and also not trust. I worked with some of them, and uh, with, I, I touched production systems with my hands, right? So I didn't see such problems for for years on production, but here we saw obviously very big overhead. Why? Why so? Why? Why we survived? with this on production. This is an interesting question. Let's return to it after we explore the second path. Second path, okay, forget about PGSTATK cache. We only have PGSTAT statements, PGWet sampling. We know overhead of both are not, not so big. And then we just explore from one to 500 connections on both modern Intel platform and modern AMD. 176 vCPUs on one and 300 60 VCPUs on another. And the huge surprise was Intel be behaved, uh, again, the same, the same workload, PG bench uh, dash uppercase S. So select only, single query, very simple, sub millisecond uh, latency. Huge surprise was Intel behaves not well at all. It behaves similar to what we had with PGSTATK cache enabled, but higher, yes, higher, it reached 1 million, I think, or so. Uh, maybe slightly below it, and then went down. While AMD, like this going down, even before you reach uh, number of vCPUs, increasing number of connections and jobs in, in PG bench, it, it's not normal. Some kind of problem, obviously. While AMD also, it, like, also was not good, but it didn't go down. It, it, go, it went down slightly, right? 
it, it all it's all, it all it demonstrated almost a plateau very different behavior and we started studying what is what's happening here and obviously the problem was persistent statements in this case and we saw it i think from weight events by pg weight sampling but we also collected flame graphs and we obtained two very different pictures for these platforms everything is the same ubuntu 22 or 4 postgres 16 latest version everything is like some kind of tuning applied, uh, kind of default tuning we usually apply to new clusters under our control. Mm-hmm. No, no, nothing, nothing special, nothing fancy, but very different behavior. And on flame graphs, we could see that in case of Intel, these uh, fear rapids, we see that uh, Petitional Statements has a huge S underscore log function call consumed a lot of time. And uh, in case of AMD, this call is much like small. So in case of Intel, it was like 75% of whole time spent by CPU in flame graph. It, well, like why, what's happening? Something not normal at all. And I, I talked to a few guys, uh, talked to Andrei Borodin and Alexander Korotkov. And interesting, they, they both mentioned the idea that probably the statements needs sampling here, right? Sampling. So. What? Yeah, in, so what? it's an interesting idea. We don't currently have a parameter. Yeah, we don't like for a lot of the other things we have, like for logging, for example, because there's such overhead to logging, we have parameters for that kind of thing. We can sample um, to, only, 12. to only measure one in 10 or one in 100. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, I'm thinking actually, I'm a, I know we've discussed this before, but for min duration statement, yeah, I think since more recently, but for auto explain from a long time ago, for example, um, but the the seventy five percent makes sense as well. Just to give people an idea of the exact numbers, I've pulled up that chart as well. On Intel with PGSAT statements, it does get to very nearly a million TPS without PGSAT K cache, and then drops a little bit less rapidly, but still it drops down to five hundred thousand at one hundred and fifty, and then down to about three hundred thousand by the time you get into the hundreds of clients. Whereas AMD with PGSAT statements continues to rise at 100 clients to about 1.2 million gets above 1.5 million at about 150 clients then seems saturated and and it's mostly a plateau slight decline as you get more so it's that's about five times more by the time you get to you know 300,000 versus 1.5 million starts to make sense that that's the sem- like roughly yeah. 75 percent overhead i guess yeah so in, in all cases when you reach uh, some Usually, the number of VCPU, you, you go down. But no, normal, normally, you go down slowly descending, right? Bad mm-hmm. picture demonstrated on Intel, like very acute, like acutely going down, right? Very f- going down very fast. And this is not normal. And Good of point. course, we, to confirm that PGS statements involved, and also to get numbers we wanted, the, we wanted big numbers, right? Like, yeah. I, when I posted it on Twitter, of course, people started liking and reposting. Like with AMD, we, we, I think we, we, we've got, uh, without PGS statements, just removing it, we've got uh, 2.5 million TPS, right? On AMD. Nearly, yeah. Almost, almost, right. Uh, above two, 2 million TPS. Uh, my tweet was uh, 2 million TPS on Postgres 16. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah, <laughs> it was funny to see the reaction from CEO of Planet Scale. Like, <laughs> like it's not real workload. Well, I we know it's not real workload. It's select only. We just <laughs> like, it's purely synthetic workload. Like we're just exploring some edge of what system can provide. Of course, it's not realistic. It's mm-hmm. some selector. That's it. Well, maybe some, there are some systems which need mostly this kind of workload. And this is an interesting question because if they, if they have such workload, they suffer from bigger problems from PGS assessments. This is, I think this is the main idea of, like, to, should be main idea of today's episode. Look at your workload and understand the nature of it. But obviously, CEO of Planet Scale is not interested in single node performance, right? Because the yeah. main thing is sharding, right? So <laughs> single node should be should not provide millions of TPS, right? It's not normal, right? <laughs> it doesn't help the marketing. 
Right, right, right. Everyone realizes it's uh, select only, everything is cached in memory, but still, 2.5 million TPS, wow. On machine, you can just rent easily. Well, it's expensive machine. I think uh, if it's not spot, if it's normal without any discounts, it's above $10,000 uh, per month. So it's expensive machine. Yeah. Of course, but it's possible. And this is just Postgres with minimal tuning, right? It's good. Like two, 2 million TPS, hoo -hoo. Uh, Of course, I, it's slight, I'm slightly sad comparing to 2016, how many years already passed, like eight? 1 million, yeah. 2 million. Uh, maybe question can maybe we can do more we can squeeze maybe more but it's a separate question we will probably think about it but returning to pgs statements the main what, what's happening again uh, a lot of sessions uh, they compete trying to update the same record in pgs statements just single record select query that's it if it was different queries right it will it would be okay so I even started calling this workload pathological. But then I say, okay, what about all SaaS systems and social media? Do they have something, some query which is executed, which is, it should be fast and it's executed in many cases? And the answer is yes. Usually if, you, if people work with your system, you need to select, it can be cached of course, but I saw it many times some primary key lookup to tables like users or, or posts or mm -hmm. projects or blogs or something. And you see most of sessions, most of uh, sessions, I mean, not only database sessions, but for example, like session in terms of HTTP yeah. communication, web sessions. Most of them need this query, right? In this case, you probably, you might have this problem. You might have this observer effect. And... Of course, solution would be to start caching them, probably, right, and, and so on. But this is still an issue. So if you have, for example, 1,000 TPS or more of some primary key lookup, probably you already might have this problem overhead from PGS statements, which maybe for whole workload, which you have, is not so big. As, as we mentioned, it can be 1 or 0.5%. But if you zoom into this part of workload, primary key lookup, probably there this overhead is bigger and it may be uh, guys I talked to, maybe they are right and maybe sampling could be a good solution. Maybe PGS statements could guess, oh, this is high frequency query. A lot of TP QPS are happening here. Calls number is, good, is high. Maybe I just need to start sampling. Maybe, I don't know. It's a it's an interesting question. And of course, another interesting question, what's happening? Why? Intel, right? Why Intel? And I don't have an answer yet. We see these flame graphs, we realize, okay, this code is running much longer than on Intels. Right now, there is an idea to explore older uh, Intels, Cascade Lake, and maybe even older Xeons, right? Which uh, may be used much more in production systems. And, and maybe also Epics, older Epics, third and second generation, maybe. We also have issue, not related, but we also observe an issue with, um, we discussed a uh, lightweight locks lock manager contention. Uh, their AMD behaves worse than Intel. So it's kind of interesting. But what we need to understand, if a lot of sessions run the same query, it can be bad in terms of lock manager. So the solution would be get rid of planning time using prepared statements. This is ideal. Or just reduce frequency and you won't notice this, right? Or uh, use, um, make sure fast path is true always. And uh, it means that you have only a few indexes and partition, partition pruning works in plans. And also you have a observer effect in PGS statements in this case. Yeah. And second, Intel versus AMD. AMD. This is, this is uh, like... I don't have answers here, but it's interesting to just uh, dig into it and understand it. The thing I've heard you say multiple times in the past is when you're doing this kind of work or when, you, when you're looking at your system, it's trying to understand where's the, where the bottleneck is. Something I really like about this piece of work that you've done is you first identified that PG stack K cache was a bottleneck and then turned that, switched that off and then tried to work out what the next bottleneck was. 
looks like it actually might be PG stat statements, even though you, even though uh, maybe in your head you were thinking oh, it probably isn't. But let's try turning it off and see if that makes a difference. That made a big difference. So it's each time, like even if you uh, when you when you're thinking about maybe trying to get above that two point five million or above, maybe three million, we have to work out what's the what's the current bottleneck. Like that, that's what's how we. Right. That's, right. Yeah, exactly. So that's a really nice thing that. I don't see enough people thinking about on their own workloads, but also when they're benchmarking, what are we currently limited by? Right, right, right. So uh, uh, when we perform uh, any uh, performance research, like benchmarks, analysis, uh, root cause analysis after some incidents on production, Mm -hmm. or we try to reproduce problems, we perform, like always database systems is a complex thing and workload usually is quite complex. So to study the whole, we need to apply this, like I mentioned uh, before we had this call, I mentioned yep. uh, René Descartes, or how to pronounce it in English. Uh, I think that, so, well, it's French, right? So it was. It's French, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like René Descartes. Uh, right. So Renee, the maybe. idea is we need to properly split whole into segments and then try to study each segment separately when you study each sep- segment separately and know how each, each of it behaves. For example, okay, there is a f- high frequent select. Let's study how it behaves without anything else. We know how it usually behaves without anything else in, in like in, in emptiness, right? And by the way, when we study it, we also can divide into smaller pieces. For example, okay, let's remove this. Let's remove that uh, extension. So going deeper, deeper. So basically, minimal pieces. We study. It takes time, of course, right? But then we we know small pieces how they behave. We can try to compose it back to complex workload and study already an ensemble of it, right? Uh, uh, as a whole, this is a regular scientific approach. I think very one of the oldest ones, right? But we must do it here. And I cannot agree with uh, plain scale CEO. Okay, it's not normal. It's not. But we study it because it, 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 it's presented in, in our complex production workloads, right? For example, primary key lookups uh, with 1,000 or more QPS. It's not uh, uncommon. Right. Yeah. Well, yep. but, but to be clear, to be clear, I'm still a big fan of encouraging every workload I've ever seen or every setup I've ever seen, especially we're talking about SaaS companies, like that kind of thing. I would still encourage them to have PGStat statements unless they've done some testing that, that, that it somehow is affecting their workload. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if it was 30%, uh, I would say in many cases we still need to have it because without it, we are blind. Yeah. But if it was 30%, if we did find that out, it would be cool to have sampling. To, if, if we then took one in 10, we yeah. could reduce that maybe to 3%. Also, so maybe it's not quite right. linear, but you know. But I mean. sampling here should be smart. It should be applied only to high frequent uh, queries, high, high, high frequency queries, right? So anyway, I think we are almost out of time. We are. The bottom are. line, yeah, the bottom line uh, check. Uh, I, I think we should also check our ARM uh, platform as well uh, and see how it behaves. So there is difference. Yeah. In PGS statements, behavior on uh, regular queries versus high, regular slow queries like updates, updates or deletes, and so versus high high frequent, very fast selects like primary key lookups. Yep. And there is difference between AMD and Intel. So yep. this is this is the bottom line, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see results of our further investigation of what's happening. We plan to understand details here. Nice one. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Nikolai. Thank you, everyone, Thank you. for listening, and catch you soon. Bye-bye.